Hey there, welcome to another week of Dr. Tell Me Why. Well, it's actually been a little bit longer than a week. It's been like three weeks and I'm so sorry about that. I've just been so incredibly busy. I think my, my, my favorite days from the last three weeks were the days where I'd have like five or six hours of sleep. But it feels so good to be back and I'm so excited because I've missed you guys. So let's get the ball rolling. So today's video is all about hair loss and more specifically we will be looking at the most common type of hair loss, we'll be looking at androgenic alopecia. Androgenic alopecia is literally everywhere you look. It affects up to 50% of men and up to 30% of women, so as I said, it's literally everywhere. And though losing your hair is something that we tend to joke about as a society, it is definitely no joke for plenty of people. It can have a tremendous impact on your self-esteem as well as your mental well-being. And so in this video, I'll be looking at androgenic alopecia and explaining the biology behind why some people get to keep their hair while others end up losing it. I'll also be looking at one of two FDA approved treatments for androgenic alopecia, minoxidil. I'll be explaining how it works and why it doesn't work for some people, as well as giving you six quick things you can or should keep in mind before starting treatment. But if you're new here, you're probably already wondering what exactly is Dr. Tell Me Why? I mean, I wonder about it most days. In short, Dr. Tell Me Why is a platform where I teach you guys all about medicine. I basically try and make medical knowledge accessible to a YouTube audience. If that sounds like the sort of content that you want to see here on YouTube or want to see more of here on YouTube, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to keep tabs on all the great medical content that I have lined up for you guys. So subscribe, but only if you want to. Androgenic alopecia is also known as male pattern baldness and if you're still not quite sure what I'm referring to, it's that classic M-shaped pattern hair loss that you tend to see on a lot of men in their 20s and in their 30s. The hair loss tends to be concentrated around the crown of the head and around the temples and there's a very good reason for this. These areas are basically where you tend to find the androgen sensitive follicles. Androgens are male sex hormones and they include things like testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. And these two hormones just happen to be the most important hormones when it comes to either keeping your hair or losing it. Androgens like testosterone are the reason why men are more likely to go bald than women are. It's because men have higher levels of testosterone. And it's also the reason why eunuchs or boys who have been castrated before puberty never tend to go bald it's because they lack the testosterone producing organs and therefore have very little testosterone in their bodies. But what you need to remember is that androgens like testosterone or dihydrotestosterone can't act on hair follicles on their own. They need receptors to attach to. So once the androgens attach to the receptors, the androgen receptors on those hair follicles, they activate them which leads to the production of a vast array of molecules. Examples include TGF-B1, TGF-B2, as well as interleukin-6. Another group of people who never end up losing their hair are people with androgen insensitivity syndrome. These people lack the androgen receptor and so the androgen cannot communicate with the hair follicles and therefore people without these androgen receptors never end up going bald. So I suppose at this stage you might be wondering why don't all men go bald if it's all down to androgens and androgen receptors, both of which most men tend to have. Well it's probably because androgen receptors are not created equally. Some people tend to have androgen receptors that are more sensitive to androgens than others. Those people will produce large amounts of these hair destroying, hair murdering molecules than people who have androgen receptors that are perhaps less sensitive to testosterone. And the thing that determines just how sensitive your androgen receptors are to testosterone, well you probably guessed it, it's genetics. And though more research is definitely needed, we know for a fact that hair loss isn't just passed down from the mother line. We know this because one study found that 81% of balding sons were found to have a father with significant hair loss too. So maybe blame your dad or maybe blame no one. Blame genetics and your DNA I suppose if you're going to blame someone or something. The consensus today is that it's not going to be one single gene that determines whether you're going to go bald or not, it's going to be a combination of different genes that interact with one another and essentially determine 
just how many hairs you lose in the morning every day and how bald you end up. And all this brings us to minoxidil, one of two FDA approved treatments for androgenic alopecia. Minoxidil surprisingly has a longer history than most people would expect. Minoxidil was first developed in the 1950s as a potential treatment for ulcers. However, that really didn't work out for minoxidil and it proved to be a tremendous failure. It literally did nothing for ulcers. But while studying minoxidil's effects on ulcers, their research teams realized that it relaxed blood vessels and reduced blood pressure. Eventually, minoxidil was approved by the FDA for the treatment of hypertension. After being approved by the FDA for the treatment of hypertension, clinicians quickly realized that this new drug had an interesting side effect. It seemed to grow hair back again. Not a bad side effect if you ask me. <laughs> Soon enough, doctors started prescribing minoxidil for the treatment of hair loss off-label, and the FDA followed soon, approving the drug for the treatment of androgenic alopecia in 1988. So how exactly does minoxidil work to grow hair back? Well, the truth is we don't actually really know. <laughs> It's a bit embarrassing, minoxidil has been around forever, but we don't really know how it grows hair back, we just know that it does. It is thought that minoxidil increases the blood flow to the scalp by relax relaxing the blood vessels, as well as producing a vast array of molecules that encourage continued hair growth. Research scientists observed that after the use of minoxidil, the number of hair follicles as well as the size of the individual hair follicles increase on a balding scalp. And so minoxidil definitely works, but I suppose we don't know how, yet anyway. So here are six quick things that you should know before starting minoxidil treatment. Minoxidil is available over the counter and it is considered a very safe treatment with very few side effects. The majority of people tend to get good results, however there can be an increase in hair loss in the first 8-12 to 12 weeks of treatment. However, aspirin can reduce minoxidil's efficacy, so that's definitely something to bear in mind if you take aspirin regularly. Minoxidil works best for younger men who tend to suffer from mild to moderate hair loss. Should you stop using minoxidil, you will probably lose all your newly acquired hair within 3-6 to six months, so treatment is effective, however it is also for life. And obviously whatever this is between us, this is definitely not a doctor-patient relationship, so if you're in doubt, always go and consult with your doctor. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that like button. What hitting the like button does is it tells YouTube you thought I made a cool video, and so YouTube begins recommending that cool video to other people who it thinks might be interested in it as well. Press the like button, but only if you liked it. If you really love this video then please subscribe. Subscribing is the best way to keep tabs on all the great medical content that I have lined up for you guys, so do that. And don't forget to annoy all your balding friends by sharing this video with them. I mean, I am pretty sure, very confident that they will appreciate it. <laughs> You'll probably end up with no friends. <laughs>